Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about implicit differentiation. And to start out, I want to look at an example. Uh, so here's a curve. Uh, and the curve is y squared plus y plus x equals 1. Uh, and this is not necessarily a function. Uh, notice there's a y squared, so we can almost expect that this is not a function. Uh, as we have been working with so far in calculus. But I could think of it as a function in another way. Maybe it's several functions. Uh, and if I knew what y was, or if I could solve this equation, then I could take it straight of easy enough if it were y equals a bunch of x stuff over on the other side. Well, what if I can't solve it so that it's a bunch of y equals x stuff? What do I do then? And what I do is what we call implicit differentiation. So this thing, can, um, so we call this guy an implicit function. Okay. When a function is written in such a way that I can't solve it for y, then we call it an implicit function. If I can solve it for y, and I solve it, and I, it looks something like y equals x squared plus x plus 2, so I've got a function where I've got y equals a, a bunch of x stuff, or a function of x, then I call this an explicit function. So this is an implicit function. This is an explicit function. Okay, so uh, before I get into how do I actually take a derivative of an implicit function, first I want to just go back to the basics. And let's look at uh, if I have a function, and let's call it y. Now, what I've seen before is if I have a function y, then how do I write y's derivative? Well, one way to write it is y prime, but that's not what I'm going to like for implicit differentiation. What I want to write is that the derivative of y is dy over dx. Okay, and all that this is really saying, this isn't very enlightening at all. It says that this is y, this is the derivative of y with respect to x. So this is y, this is the derivative of y. Okay, good. Uh, now, let's ask something a little more complicated, and that is, what if I wanted to take the derivative of y squared? Now, I don't know what this function y is. All that I'm assuming is that it's a function of x. So it's a bunch of x stuff, right? It's a grouping of stuff that has x in it. So I have a bunch of x stuff squared. Does that sound familiar at all? It should, because this is exactly what we did in the chain rule. We have a bunch of stuff squared. So what's the derivative of a bunch of stuff squared? Well, we learned from the chain rule that I can just take the derivative of it as is and write that it's 2y to the first power but then the chain rule is to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of y is dy dx. So I need to multiply this by the derivative of y. So all I really did here is I used the chain rule to take this derivative. I took the derivative of the something squared to get 2y. And then I took the derivative of the inside function, y, to get dy dx. And so I get my derivative of y squared. Okay, let's do the same thing for y cubed. And now I think we probably kind of get the idea and we could do it again. How do I take the derivative of y cubed? Well, it's something cubed. So it's three of those something squared. But now I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which in this case is y. So the derivative of y is dy dx, or the derivative of y is the derivative 
of y. Okay, and I've got a derivative for y, y squared, y cubed. I could keep going and do something similar like this. What if I wanted to take the derivative of sine of y? If I want to take the derivative of sine of y, well, the derivative of sine of something is cosine of that something. So we get cosine of y, but we're not done because now I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is y, so I get a multiplied by dy dx. All right, so we've got a pretty good feel for how to take the derivative of things that involve y's that aren't just single y's. If I just have a single y and I want to take its derivative, that's easy. It's just dy dx. But if I have some uh, y to an exponent or a sine of y or anything else that we've worked with in calculus this far, I can still do it. I just have to realize I'm actually using the chain rule to do it. All right, let's go back to our original example here that was an implicit function. And quickly, let's just see how I would take the derivative of something like this. There are two sides to this equation, and if I could solve for y, that'd be wonderful. But there are going to be a lot of problems where you can't solve for y, but you still want to know what's the slope at a certain point. So what do I do? I just take the derivative of everything where it is. So what's the derivative of y squared? Well, I already figured that out. The derivative of y squared is 2y times dy dx. And then what's the derivative of y? Well, it's dy dx. What's the derivative of x? Well, the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. And what's the derivative of 1? That's 0. So I've got 2y dy dx plus dy dx plus 1 equals 0. And here's where the tricky part of implicit differentiation comes along. And the hard part actually is not taking derivatives. The hard part is doing algebra and actually solving for your dy dx. So be really careful when you're solving for dy dx that you're actually following all the rules of algebra. So let me factor out the dy dx from these first two terms. And I get the dy over dx times 2y plus 1 is equal to, if I move the 1 to the other side, I get minus 1. Now I can divide both sides by 2y plus 1, and I get that dy over dx is equal to negative 1 divided by 2y plus 1. And I get my derivative. Now, in some ways you might think, this is an odd derivative because we've never seen a derivative before where a y shows up in the derivative. So what's going on here? How can there be a y in the derivative? Well, if I knew what the function y was, or if I could solve this thing for y, then I could just plug back in here and everything would be good. But since I don't know, and in fact, I can see there's a y squared here. So for any given value of, uh, x, there might be multiple solutions for y even. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a y value here to get my derivative. So I need to know the x and y coordinate typically for something that's lying on an implicit function in order to figure out what my derivative is. It's not just good enough to say, what's the derivative of this function at x equals 2? Because it may not care about x, it may care about y. So you need to know the x coordinate and the y coordinate typically. Not always, but typically. Okay, so that's how you do implicit differentiation. Let's look at some examples so that you can get a better feel for this.